Okay, here we're going to focus on the head section of our website. Now, the head section doesn't show up in the browser. Remember, like I said, anything within the body tag, so all of this will show up in the main frame of the browser screen. But the head section is a very important section in websites, um, and we have to follow some best practices. So let's learn some of those now that WordPress recommends. Okay, so if you go over to your browser and look for, in Google, WordPress theme development, you'll find one of the first links is this website, codex.wordpress.org. So this is kind of one of WordPress's official documentation websites. They're working on some new documentation as this tutorial is being made, but this is still a great resource that contains a lot of information. What we're going to do is head over to document head and see what their best practices are. So they give you a little checklist. And so we're going to add these things. We need to make sure we're using the proper doc type, which we are. Uh, we also need to make sure we add a few other functions and things like that that WordPress gives us so that our website is optimized. And the reason why we do this is, number one, for best practices. It meets the HTML kind of compliance standards. But also so that when people swap out our theme for a different theme, the site doesn't just break. Okay, so I'll explain that down the line, but let's go ahead and add some of this stuff to our website so that we have a compliant kind of best practice followed uh, header. So what we're going to do first is add something here to our HTML tag, the opening tag there. So let's go ahead and do this. You're going to add a chunk of PHP code, which is going to compute into something, and we'll see this shortly. So it's language attributes. This is for the HTML documents language attributes. And then we need to close that PHP tag. So notice there's two angle brackets back to back there. And remember, when you're writing this code, it needs to be perfect. You can't make any mistakes because it'll break your site. So if I save that, I'm going to run my project. If yours isn't already running, go ahead and run it. And let's go over and take a look. So I have it open over here. I'll refresh. And what I'm going to do is right click and hit inspect. Use the Chrome inspector tool. And now if you look, we get this language attribute in there. Language equals en-us. Okay, so that helps to make this document valid. And if I were to take this out from that first angle bracket in there through the PHP side and just kind of cut that and save it and again refresh over here, you'll see it's gone. So that's what that little snippet of, of PHP was doing. It was computing into a chunk of HTML that would fit right there. And so hopefully you're seeing how HTML and PHP work together in these .php files. Okay, they're essentially HTML files, but they can embed PHP, and we embed it using this tag structure, and then the PHP itself is inside of those tag structures. Okay, so this is a function that computes into, I'm saving it, and it computes into this right here. It just computes into a, a little bit of text with some quotation marks and an equal sign and a hyphen. Okay, so let's keep going here. So we need the language attribute. Now, the title tag, they've been making some changes as of WordPress version 4.1 and version 4.4. So what we're going to do is we're going to eliminate this for now. And you'll see why in a second. If you look over here, you can read about kind of the latest changes when you click on some of their functions. So typically, they would say to use WP title as a function for their titles. But if we go over there by clicking on it, you'll see that they've been making some changes to their title code. Um, and it's really hard to find this stuff sometimes. You have to read the comments and just to, in order to find the latest information. So they're saying that it's basically planned to be deprecated. That means they're going to remove that functionality um, over time. So we're going to leave it off for now. And if you have any problems, you just want to kind of come and look for WP title in the WordPress documents. Or you can always just go back to hard coding it like we had it in there. But we're going to leave ours off for now. So let's take a look at what else we need. 
we're going to need this line of code right here so I'll grab that we'll drop it in right here we'll also grab some of these lines right here and most importantly we want to get this WP underscore head function right here so we'll just grab all of this for now and you can kind of read this for more details since we're just doing this for learning purposes we'll just grab this and move on so I'm gonna paste that all right over here and I'm going to leave this bootstrap link in here for now but we will be moving it uh, into a different file once we create it over here. So I'm going to save all this now. Command S to save on a Mac. Control S on Windows. If I go over here and refresh now, we can see our site is working. It's added a little bit more margin spacing and stuff like that, but our site is still working and all of that code now is injected. And we can confirm that by right-clicking, hit Inspect, and now if we open up the head section, we're getting all of this stuff kind of coming through at this point. Okay, cool. So we've added some code to our head sections, and it's a little bit more filled out and kind of follows best practices.